Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. It's going to be the next episode in my fuzz face rebuild. I've already done a circuit schematic analysis a couple years back, actually, which is kind of interesting to go back and see. But I've learned some new things, and so I'm going to do a little bit of that again here today. And you see, the truth of the matter is that the fuzz face is probably the coolest pedal on the face of the planet, in my humble opinion. It's near and dear to my heart. It was one of the first projects that I took on. It really kind of launched me into my interest with pedals many years ago. So we're going to give it a second look. And what I've got here on the screen is a picture of the schematic that I drew up. This is my fuzz face as it exists when I built it five years ago. Um, now the resistor values, I just took readings with my multimeter to see maybe if they had drifted, but these are in circuit. And taking readings in circuit is sometimes kind of weird. I think it's mostly correct, but maybe take it with a grain of salt. So this is the way that the circuit exists right now. I've got a couple of thoughts that's going to kind of spur on some of the discussion that I'm going to have, and I'm going to get into some mods, and I've got a kind of a bit of a crazy setup right now that I'm contemplating. So first and foremost, I want to talk about this input switching mod. I like it, but I think that it could be improved. I've got a 2.2 microfarad on the top, switching to a 1 microfarad on the bottom. I think that the difference between those two is perhaps a little too subtle, so I kind of think it would be beneficial to basically expand it. So, for example, if you would go like, I mean, you could leave the 2.2, you could go to like 4.7 or even like 20. I don't think that one really matters. I mean, that's the big, fat, woolly, lots of low-end capacitor. But then this one microfarad, I think if I would reduce it to even like 0 0.47, 0 0.2, or 0 0.1, somewhere in that range, I think it would be more beneficial to give it just a little bit more contrast. Um, I could also put a mixing potentiometer here, but um, yeah, I guess I, as it exists right now, I didn't think that the difference between the two was super useful. Next thought is this fuzz control. I've got a linear taper 1K that mixes in the bypass capacitor and has a you know effect on the gain or the fuzz. In my opinion, that control is not super useful. I pretty much always leave it on maximum. So you, I might as well actually just turn it into a fixed resistor if that's what I'm going to do. Or another good option would be to change it into an anti-logarithmic taper pot. And what that basically means is, um, we'll get into this in a second, but just to draw as an example. So if you've got your, your pot this is linear taper, right? When you're on zero, you're here. When you're on 10, you're here. And then um, audio taper goes like this. And then anti-logarithmic taper goes like this. So it actually, you know, the basically the idea would be if, if when you use a linear taper pot, if all, you know, if, if you go from 10 to 9 and almost all of the the change in fuzz occurs within that short stretch, then changing the taper so that more of it exists up in that area basically means it so that you can actually get it down to like six or seven by the time you reach the same point. So um, that's something that I've seen in other places that probably would be a good idea. Next up, um, I kind of want to take a look at this part of the circuit. And I've got some ideas here which I'll get into in a second, but basically there's two things. First of all, I have a 10K audio taper pot to fix, set the bias in series with a 4.7K fixed resistor in series with a 670 ohm resistor. And I don't know if this is the best setup. And I'm going to play around with some different setups. So first of all, you need to set the bias for Q2. That's pretty critical. That's one of the more critical points in the circuit. And the reason why you make it variable, whether it's a trim pot or a potentiometer, is so that you can fine-tune it, right? Germanium transistors are known for their sensitivity, and so if you can change the resistance, you can counter for that sensitivity or the change, and you can get it to always be sounding good no matter where you're at. So 10K audio taper, though, isn't maybe the best way to do that. You know, in, in the schematic, the original schematic, I believe they used an 8.2K fixed resistor, so I have 4.7K up to 14.7K. So I'm in that range, but... Yes, I'm not 100% sure how much I like that. Um, and then also, I'll get into this a little bit more, but the, the resistance here combined with the resistance here forms a voltage divider. And I'm just not sure that I like the configuration here. So, all that said, 
let's take a look at what I've got. Um, this is the schematic I drew up and posted a picture of, but I've got it here so I can draw on it a little bit, which is always fun. So um, the I'm going to start at the beginning, and I've got a lot of mods on here. Like This is pretty um, theoretical at this point, but let's just start at the beginning. So first we introduce R1 as a 1 meg anti-pop resistor. The idea is you've got DC coming in from your power supply, and you've got these coupling caps, which are right here on this circuit, that are blocking direct current from going this way into your guitar, and you don't want direct current going into your guitar. Well, capacitors aren't perfect. Some of that DC gets stored up in this region of the circuit with kind of nowhere to go. And so when you engage the pedal, that direct current enters into your signal flow and is discharged as a pop. We don't really like that. So this one meg grounding resistor gives that bleeding direct current a slow trickle to ground while the pedal is not being used. And it really doesn't have any other effect on the circuit. Uh, maybe a little bit of an effect on input impedance, but I'm not even 100% sure about that. But then um, this pre-gain control is kind of interesting. The fuzz faces are known for having a very low input impedance. So by introducing, this is a variable resistor in a series. This is a little bit different than your guitar's volume control, which is a voltage divider. So if, for example, if this were to ground, that would basically just be like adding another guitar volume control in line. That really doesn't make any sense to me. But this this is from Joe Gagan's Easy Face, and it, as I understand it, it will play around with the way that the the pickups will interact with the circuit. And you know, if you if you set it on one one end, it basically sh shunts right through, and it's just like standard. But then if you increase this resistance, I think 100k to 250k seems to be about the range of pot you could use. That will potentially help to give you softer shades of distortion that's a little bit different than if you just clean it up with your guitar's volume control and it will and kind of limit this the signal you know obviously introducing resistance in series is going to resist current flow so that will help to kind of taper it a little bit so basically it will give you options to turn the fuzz face from kind of this raging monster to something a little bit more in between then I have one thing I noticed on mine is I actually had a double pole double throw switch in here, which is probably just because that's whatever I had at the time, but I changed it to a single pole double throw just for the sake of efficiency because I'm that's the easiest way to use it. And then we're going to switch between two different input caps like I talked before. I'm going to probably try um, 0.47 or maybe 0.22 just to give me a little bit more range between these two, but this is a place where I could definitely experiment with things. Maybe use alligator clips to test what I like. Then I think I made a little bit of a change. I want to say here I had measured 68K. Now, again, that could just be because it's in circuit. and um, But I do believe that 100K is more standard. And this is your negative feedback path. So the lower the resistance, the more negative feedback you're going to have. And so um, I kind of want to stick with the 100K here. Not changing my potentiometers. I am going to probably play around with just swapping this to a fixed 1K resistor. Um, again, I don't feel like the fuzz control does much good. And if you have the pre-gain control and the two bias controls, which I'll get into in a second, I think that would be a better way to soften some of the distortion if that's what you want to do. Now let's go to this top rail. I'm going to start over here at the power supply. Now these are PNP transistors, so you need 9 volt negative to be on your power rail, and then the 9 volt positive is your ground. So all these down here are positive. So you want to orient your capacitors accordingly, whether it's this guy, positive ground, this guy, positive ground. Um, and then, it's th this, so this first capacitor, 100 microfarad, this could be 47 to 100, I think is the range. And it will just help smooth out the DC ripple a little bit, uh, kind of as a filtering cap. Then this is our diode. This is a polarity protection. So if we would accidentally plug in 9 volt positive, like a standard power supply, this would help to protect our transistors, that they would not be um, have a problem with that. Then over here, we get into some substantive mods. So on my old circuit, 
there's a 33K resistor going to the collector of Q1. Now, I certainly would argue that Q2's collector voltage is pretty critical, but I feel like Q1 collector voltage gets overlooked a little bit. So I would like to have some ability to dial that in as well. So I think a 25K resistor in series with a 25K variable resistor makes sense to me to just help dial that in. I think there's an argument to put this as a trim pot or to, I guess, keep it internal because if you put this control on the outside of the circuit, it does make it subject to kind of getting bumped or, or changed and this is kind of a fine-tuned control that you do want to kind of dial in correctly, but I guess I kind of trust my ears to be able to make that work, but basically the idea is introducing a lot of these resistors onto the top of the pedal as pots does bring in the uh, potential to make the pedal sound really bad, right? If you if you are way out of bias, you know, 25K, the, so there's 50K of resistance max, 25K resistance minimum, that's, you know, that's a pretty good range compared to our 33K stock resistor. So there's potential here to make the pedal sound bad. And if you go too far in that direction, it actually can get really difficult to fine tune with the pot. So for example, if I used a 100K pot, the the exact place on that variable resistor to get the correct amount of resistance could be very difficult to find. It's a very, you know, even just a tiny little change will go too far forward or backwards. So you kind of do want to be cautious a little bit with that, but I think it's worth experimenting with. And then with Q2, I made a kind of a reorientation here. Now, if you look Basically, we've got resistor here coming from the collector. Now, there's this is a, a variable resistor as a pot in series with a fixed resistor. But then this junction point, you've got this 670 ohm resistor, and then it goes to your power supply, which, as I understand, uh, the AC signal will see that as a path to ground. So this creates a voltage divider, right? A resistor in line with another resistor towards ground, that's a voltage divider. And that's a volume control. So this is where you're losing a lot of volume from your output. Now, fuzz faces are known for being somewhat low output devices. And this, I think, would be a way to potentially fix that. Now, the way I've got it here, I posted this on a forum and I've been thinking about it a little bit. It might be a little bit too far in the other direction. Meaning, if we just take the output of this collector, like I've got it right here, I have no voltage divider here at all. Just this volume control which is a voltage divider, but, and this is not um, drawn correctly, but the, you could have way too much volume. Like this thing might have a lot of output with the way I've got the schematic drawn. So I may want to temper it a little bit. And basically what I'm thinking about is making a fixed resistor here of something kind of low, like maybe the 4.7K. And then the 670 ohm is where you insert the pot, a 25K pot, as a variable resistor. In, in my mind, I think that just makes more sense to me. Because you're coming out of the collector, you're having a voltage divider into your coupling cap, into another voltage divider. And it just seems kind of duplicitous to me. Why would you have two voltage dividers when one would probably do the job just fine? So... We'll see. I think that's a, room, a place to experiment a little bit. Now, again, I may want to consider putting another resistor in series here, giving me kind of a minimum point, because right now all I've got is this 25K to, um, to the collector. So I could set a pretty extreme range of bias on this Q2. And it could, again, if you, if you way misbias it, you know, at one point of this, there's basically zero resistance going to Q2, which it, the, the pedal will not function without without that. So um, it could be a little too far. I might want to put a resistor in series here. But again, I think if I use my ears and 25K isn't so far away from the 8.2K in line with the 670-ish resistor, so we got about 9K of resistance, you know, we're not too far away from that that I think it would cause a problem. But I guess in my mind, I think this makes a little bit more sense. And if you look at other distortion pedals using transistors, big muffs, um, LPP1 boosts, I think you would quickly see that almost all of them take the output straight off the collector. 
And if you want to have volume control, you certainly can have that. But putting an additional voltage divide in here really doesn't make tremendous sense to me. And then uh, lastly, let's talk about this volume control. I have seen some people advocate for as low as 100K and others for as high as 500K. My understanding is that the output impedance of the circuit is, is definitely affected by the choice of volume control. And so 250K is more of a moderate choice in my opinion. So we're going to try that. So a lot of different mods I'm throwing out here. Uh, I'm going to go I'm just going to go ahead and try some of this stuff out and we're going to see how it sounds together and we're going to go for it. So I'm kind of excited though. I think this is fun to get this uh, this old fuzz face up and running and working again. Um, I did go back and find the transistors that I'm using are 2N404A space 738 and I believe I got these from small pair that were um, specifically tuned for fuzz face. So I think I've got about 100 HFE in Q1 and about 150 HFE in Q2, which should be pretty ideal. So um, pretty excited to move forward, but these are some of my ideas for how I'm going to mod this sucker. Um, and when the last thing, obviously, that I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this from battery power to include uh, DC power as well. I know there are people that really like the sound of battery powering their fuzz faces, and I have no problem with that. But for my purposes, I found the battery power situation just made it a hassle, and then I just don't use it all a lot. Whereas if I can stick it on my board, even if it's not perfect, quote-unquote, with an old carbon battery, um, the fact that I would use it more is pretty important to me. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below, and let's keep moving forward with the build. Thanks. See you soon. Bye.